Brett Pontecorvo here, and today I'm going to walk you through my musical theater sound effect setup. Now, I developed this working on a show, Shrek Jr., where I was playing acoustic piano. So this setup is what I actually used um, when I was performing just on acoustic piano. Um, but the reason that I needed to use Ableton was because Shrek has some sound effects, and in particular, sound effects that are timed to the music. So I was looking for a creative way to be able to play those myself, even though I wasn't playing a keyboard, and this is what I came up with. So at the center of my setup here is this Behringer CMD Touch, and if you want to grab one of these for yourself, I'm going to leave a link in the description below. Um, this is a bit of a knockoff of a Novation Launchpad, but it works really well. It's a little bit cheaper, um, and if you are looking to get something that is pretty durable, reasonably priced, and you're using for productions where you're around kids, like I am, um, and you're not wanting to be super concerned with things getting damaged, this is a great way to go. Um, but it does have all of the functionalities that the, the launch pad has, and, and I've been very happy with it. It's, it's served me well, so definitely recommend this guy. Um, and so what I'm using this for is this is how I am triggering my sound. So you'll see right now there's some lights up, and all of these lights correspond to my different sound effects. Um, so quite simply, these three guys up here are dragon roars. <laughs> Um, and those sound effects are straightforward. They're not done to music. I've got my P Pinocchio sound effects for when his nose grows on the top right. Um, but what's really cool, um, that sort of developed because I was having a hard time being really um, detailed and getting things to trigger, is the farting sequence in the song I Think I Got You Beat. So Ableton has this feature that if you fire some scenes... Um, and you have a specific preference checked off, um, it'll move for you down a list of sounds. And that is how I am triggering this particular section so that I can hit one button one time every time and it will fire them off for me in the correct order. So um, regular session view on the CMD touch for most of my sound effects, but for the one song um, where it is not regular, I am using user two mode. And that is the same on a uh, launch pad. And you could totally make this work on a push if you're using that, any pad controller. And this idea you could probably make happen just using a keyboard. But remember, in this production, I was using an acoustic piano. So what I've done is I've mapped these two buttons um, to be specific things. So this guy here fires my snaps. So at the beginning of the song, I think I got you beat, I've got some snaps. And I'm just able to reach up and play those snaps. But on my last snap, instead of using this button, which is mapped to my snap clip, I use a button that is mapped to the master fire. And what happens when I use that button, you'll see, I'm going to hit it right here. Boom. It selects the next scene. So now when I get later in the song and I need to play out all of these timed sound effects, I just reach up and hit the next button. And then it's just going right through for me, which makes it really easy, right? I don't have to think. I just need to hit a pad in time. Um, and these are all set up in my drum rack down here. And each of these clips contains a note to fire off that drum rack. One other thing I'm doing that I think is worth showing is making use of the global launch quantization and some stop buttons to create a cool record scratch ending um, for a song that I am working on in this show. And when the donkey is sort of narrating Shrek and Fiona falling in love. I've got this groove that comes in underneath them. So um, I'm just using regular old session view here, um, and I fire the master scene, and this happens. So your you know, sort of standard cheesy love song. And if I want to re-trigger the uh, guitar effect, I've got this guitar here. And in the production, I actually play along with it. And then there's a moment when Donkey starts talking underneath them. And so what I've done is I have mapped a clip to pull the volume down and add a little bit of reverb, which is setting the stage perfectly because I want an abrupt cutoff where everybody goes, what happened? 
Um, and so what I've done is I've put this record scratch sound effects here and left all of my stop buttons in. So when I fire this master scene, it's gonna immediately pull out all of my other sounds and play a record scratch. So here goes. Which is super abrupt. Donkey totally breaks the mood, and we're you know back into the show. So this is the way that I have set up my sound effects for musical theater for Shrek Jr. Um, this will be helpful. Think outside of the box. Put your stuff in a grid. Make it work for you. Make sure you're using a pad controller to trigger your sounds. This will be helpful, and also it eliminates the need to remember where things are mapped to. Make sure you take a minute to like and subscribe, and I will see you here soon with more videos, more updates to come.